Are these men guilty? Is it fair to accuse this girl? Have these women done anything wrong? Yes, says the United Nations Climate Panel. Man's use of fossil fuels is jeopardizing the future. So the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC for short, has put man on trial. The evidence consists of computer models showing that as this century proceeds, emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere will lead to disastrous global warming. But a number of internationally acclaimed climatologists say it is far too early to put mankind on trial. 6 degrees C, and now we're taking them in here. It is not a particularly warm period we're in. Not in the context of or in the perspective of past climates. Interesting diagram. One of the things about the climate change issue that uh, is a great concern to me is the fact that some of these policy decisions could uh, cost quite a lot and yet have no effect at all on the climate. In my commission, I can hardly find anyone which would subscribe to the IPCC scenario. The question is why flawed models are used as a basis for enormously expensive policy decisions, far-reaching policy decisions. They shouldn't be. I have to speak out and say that the science we, are, we have is still incomplete. And the science we're being told by the IPCC is really incorrect science. The IPCC says that unless we reduce the rate of greenhouse gas emissions, the greenhouse effect will intensify and warm up our planet. Glaciers and polar ice caps will begin to melt. Rivers will burst their banks and sea levels will rise. The deserts will expand. If this United Nations climate panel scenario is correct, it will have wide-ranging consequences for people everywhere. But not all climatologists agree with these forecasts. Among those who don't is Dr. David Legates, who thinks more cautious forecasts have trouble making themselves heard. Somehow the IPCC can, is, has become a global warming bible, if you will. You can't disagree with, a global, with this with global warming statement. And if you do, you're some sort of skeptic. There's, they question your motives, they attack you personally, and so forth. Kyoto, Japan, 1997. Scientists and political leaders from all over the world met to debate the causes of global warming. Excellencies, honored guests, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Kyoto, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. The Kyoto meeting concluded that we must limit CO2 emissions to prevent disaster. The IPCC based its conclusions on computer models that attempt to predict what will happen if we double CO2 emissions. The worst case scenario shows increases of up to 5.8 degrees centigrade. If this happens, and temperatures run riot, mankind will be in serious trouble. But are the temperatures we're experiencing really so unusual? Glaciologist Jörn Peter Stephenson knows a bit about that. He's looking for clues about the climate in the past in ice core samples from Greenland. This ice is from the Viking Age, around the year 1000, also called the medieval warm period. We believe that in Greenland, the medieval warm period was about one and a half degrees warmer on average than, than today. The inland ice sheet, Greenland, summer 2003. Nordgrip. The Greenland Ice Core project is being reopened to drill the last few meters through the ice sheet 
to the rock beneath the research station. The ice core, over three kilometers in length, has been hauled up to the surface piece by piece and contains important data on the history of the climate of the Earth. It bears the fingerprints of climatic conditions over more than 120,000 years. When we remove or drill the ice core, we leave a hole. And we insert a thermometer in the hole, we are able to map out the temperature through the three kilometer ice sheet. Now that temperature, if we do it precisely enough, a thousandth of a degree accuracy, then the ice has not forgotten how cold or warm it was on the surface at the time the snow fell. So, using those temperatures, we have been able to reconstruct the temperatures of the last 10,000 years. The temperature data from the ice sheet reveal long periods with much higher temperatures than those we experience today. They tell a fascinating tale of natural temperature fluctuations in the northern hemisphere, from times when man had no influence on the climate whatsoever. Now, as we go approach our time, we can see that in the period between 4,000 years ago and back to the period 2,000 years ago, which is actually the Roman age, the temperatures have been decreasing in Greenland by 2.5 degrees. Then the temperatures increased gradually up to a maximum point around the medieval warm period, we call it 1,000 years ago, and then temperatures declined and goes down to a minimum around 1650 AD, comes back up a little in the, in the 18th century, and then around 1875 we have the lowest point in the last 8,000 years, right here, and that matches exactly the time when meteorological observations started. Other core samples from elsewhere in Greenland confirm that the Little Ice Age ended about 140 years ago, at the coldest point in the last 10,000 years. The natural, pronounced alteration of warm and cold periods back in time has also been confirmed elsewhere in the Northern Hemisphere. Carbon-14 dating of organic matter from peat bogs and tree rings confirms the pattern. So do data from stalactite caves in China and measurements from North Africa. There is considerable evidence that major fluctuations in climate are normal and that the recent warming may be a natural consequence of our leaving the Little Ice Age in 1875. The problem is that we, and I agree completely, that we have had a global temperature increase in the 20th century. Yes. But an increase from what? Probably an increase from the lowest point we've had for the last 10,000 years. And this means that it will be very hard indeed to prove whether the increase of temperature in the 20th century was man-made or it's a natural variation. That will be very hard because we made ourselves an extremely poor experiment. We started to observe meteorology at the coldest spot in the last 10,000 years. A warm period towards the early portion of the record. Our general perception of the climate in the last 1,000 years is that it was warmer in the Middle Ages than it is today, and that we emerged from the Little Ice Age about 140 years ago. But now the IPCC has moved to the new climate history graph. In it, the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age have both vanished. The graph has been dubbed the hockey stick, because only the lower end of the line points almost vertically upward. Thus implying that the recent warming is unusual.